Welcome to the second part of the video from the chapter The Best Christmas Present in the World. In the previous part, we read that the author found a letter in a small tin box inside the secret drawer, which was written by Captain Jim McPherson to his wife Connie. In the second part, you see how the captain narrated the wonderful incident that happened in the battlefield on Christmas. It was a beautiful Christmas morning. The captain McPherson and his men were standing in the trenches. Someone spotted a white flag being waved from the enemy lines. He saw many German soldiers calling out and wishing a happy Christmas to the British soldiers. Some British soldiers returned the greeting as the German moves towards them. Captain McPherson was suspicious but alert too, as it could be a trick to deceive and check them. However, it wasn't. The German did not carry weapons and instead brought German wine and tinned meat. The soldiers hugged one another and they exchanged food and drink. The German officer approached McPherson and they shook their hands warmly. The German officer told him that he was from Dusseldorf and he played the cello in the orchestra. Cello is a, and, uh, it's a musical instrument like guitar. He introduced himself as Hans Wolf. Macpherson in return introduced himself saying that he was a school teacher from Dorset. Hans Wolf smiled and said that he knew Dorset from the book he had read. His favorite author was Thomas Hardy as his favorite book was Far From Madding Crowd. Both men shared the Christmas cake that Connie had set for her husband Jim. Hans Wolf loved the marzipan on the cake. Marzipan is a covering or you can say it's a filling made of almond, sugar and uh, an egg. Uh, and the Hans Wolf said that it was the best uh, cake he had ever tested. Then one soldier took out a football. The two enemies played football in the no man's land while Macpherson and Wolf clapped and cheers the man on. Hans Wolf thought the world would be a much better place if issues were sorted out by a football match and not by war. The football match ended and all food and drinks had been enjoyed. It was to end the celebration. So in this way, two enemy soldiers celebrated Christmas together amidst the war and wished one another well. This also made Jim hope the war would soon end and he would be at home in no time. Now, both armies were back in the trenches preparing for another day's war. That night, the Germans sang the carol. It's a Christmas song, Silent Night, and the British soldiers slipped right uh, with the wild shepherds watched. Then all was silent. Macpherson wrote that he would cherish these wonderful moments his entire life. He expressed the hope that war would soon end as no soldier wanted is. He is certain that he would be back home to be with his wife. He told... After writing the letter, after reading the letter, the author put it back in the envelope. He decided to send the letter to its owner. He drove to the address, but the house was burnt out. Only its outer walls stood. He got to know from a neighbor that Mrs. Macpherson was inside when the house went on fire, probably from lighted candles. She used candles rather than electricity because she all we thought that electricity was too expensive. The farmer had got her out just in time. She was in a nursing home then. So the author visited Burlington House Nursing Home and met the matron. Who is matron? Matron is a head nurse. She told the author that Mrs. McPherson was put in the conservatory for complete rest. Since she looked confused that day, Mrs. Macpherson, she was sitting in a chair when the author saw her. 
She looked blankly at him, but her eyes shone when the author called her Connie. The author gave her the letter. She did not listen to him and instead held his hand lovingly. Her eyes filled with tears. She thought her husband Jim had returned and he had kept his promise to her. She kissed him affectionately and talked to him. She said this was the best Christmas present she had ever received. The story is about the joy that Christmas brings twice in times of distress and hopelessness. Once on the battlefield amidst death and destruction, when two armies find a moment of joy and brotherhood between them. And then again on another Christmas, when an old grieving woman finds happiness, though falls through the latter and the author thoughtfulness. So, what does it reflect? What's the message of the story? That was are the most hateful and destructive way to resolve conflicts. They result in enormous loss of lives, great suffering for soldiers who are wounded and impaired for life. They bring terrible sorrow to families, fathers, sons, mother, wives who lost their kin in the battlefield. Leaders and politicians may declare war to win vote or support from vested groups, but the losses are unacceptable. Truly no one wins war. Both sides lose in terms of men, money, effort, and property. And even a single war can send nations back several decades in progress and development and scars several generations of citizens. So the best way to resolve conflicts is through dialogue and reason. Talk across the table peacefully with an understanding for human values, justice, and friendship as global citizens. Even you can see right now, all the countries are united together to fight against the corona, which is the global problem right now. Most of the countries, uh, they shared medical equipments and uh, even our country has contributed medicines for the uh, treatment of the people. So, I think by united we stand and divided we fall. So, we should unite together and fight this war against Corona and hope that God will definitely help us to come out of this tough situation. Okay, take care all of you. Goodbye.